Europeans or Albions ruled during the age of Pisces. So when we say the time is up, we're not just, just saying this by conjecture. We're saying this because the time, the 2,166 years that they had is over. I'm not saying this because I have any bias against them or any of that. This is the science of it, and they know it. The problem is our people are not ready for it. <laughs> how, how can justice return under the age of Aquarius if we're not ready? The age of Aquarius demands information. It is the technology age Aquarius is. Aquarius demands answers. Our youth demand answers. They demand the truth. They demand this truth because they cannot proceed and lead the world without this knowledge. They cannot do it. They cannot do this without the understanding of the zodiac, which is this. Zodiacus is the ancient name of the term zodiac. Zodiacus implies the first woman, who is this. Womb man. We are man with a womb. That's who we are. No spirit can enter this plane without the agreement of a womb man. Period. We are the vehicle. We have a covenant with the cosmos where we agree to bring those spirits, which we call monads, from the astral plane and summon them to this physical plane. And it is only through the womb man that they can leave, exit, and then reposition themselves in another plane. All of this relevant to all law. Now, this is why when the brother talked about getting our land back, I know this issue very well. I fight this fight every day on top of all my other duties and responsibilities and everything else that I do. So when we talk about justice returns under the age of Aquarius, this is why when we walk into a courtroom and we understand that the court, as I explained to a class just recently, a court is also a corporation. They don't hide that from you. They put it right on the seal, right behind the judge. And they tell you that this court was incorporated in 1878, whatever it is. This court was incorporated, and, and what words do they use? Founded. So when you see the word founded, and you see the word established in, it already tells you that they're a corporation. Understand? And anybody who owns a corporation does what? Own a slave, because a corporation is a slave holder. Understand? Now, let's talk about the issues that come up in court. How am I with time, uh, Noah? All right. <laughs> The point I want to make real quick um, relative to going to court and getting land back and all these issues and all these injustices that have been done to us, when we uh, participate in organizations that take us off our square, that adds to the chaos and the confusion. So it's better not to join anything at all and just be yourself if you are not going to be a more. But if you, even if you're going to be a more, understand that sovereignty is an individual thing. Don't go into court talking about, I belong to such and such organization. And be clear about that, because as soon as you say an association, an organization, a business, a firm, a corporate, you're talking about slavery. And they love that language, because you're putting yourself right in their jurisdiction as soon as you say it. But you go in there and say, I am. Well, what organization do you belong to? Well, none. They do not know how to deal with you. But as soon as you say corporation, because they're a corporation and they speak the corporate language and they have corporate policy, they'll love you to say that. So the first thing they're going to do is, hmm, how are we going to get some money? All right? Because that's, that's the name of the game, money. Now, let's talk about who they are, why they exist, these courts. First of all, we know they're not really courts. We know they're colorable. They know they're colorable. They have to be colorable because they're dealing with colorable people, right? 
If we choose not to be colorable, we don't belong in there. So the court is this. Just like the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, just like the Bar Association, just like the United States of America, they are this. They are a private nonprofit corporation. If you get some mail that belongs to me, do you go and show up and say you're me? No, you, you can't do that. So if a private nonprofit corporation sends you a document and you have no contract with them, why should you go up and debate the contract? Because if you don't have a contract, right? If you don't have a contract, you don't have a contract. It's as simple as that. You don't need to go there and say all that. Just say, because here's my status and this and that and the other, right? Don't go in there trying to debate whether you owe money on the contract or not. Um, the bill was too high and all that. And I'm not saying that because of what you said. Un understand that. If you don't have the contract, why are you discussing the bill? It doesn't make sense, does it? First, you have to have a contract. So the first thing you need to understand when you walk in there, I don't care what the issue is. Here's the question. And, and I write things down, specific things I write down, because when I write them down, I'm spelling, understand? Do we have a contract? Mm. If I rescind my birth certificate, do I? agree to belong to the corporate ward state that calls itself the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, which is a private nonprofit corporation. If I don't have a birth certificate with you, what agreement do we have that you should summon me to answer anything, right? If I don't have an agreement with the parking authority, which I don't, do they have the right to send me a bill saying that I owe them for a parking ticket? It is, it's ludicrous. Now, the thing to say is, if, if you don't have the contract, you have certain rights, and you need to exercise those rights. And there are codes even that are there, and laws that are there to protect you if you don't have a contract with somebody and they're trying to make you adhere to a contract. I don't care what kind of contract it is. If you don't have a driver's license and they pull you over, the first thing you need to say is, I, I don't have a contract. They may still give you the ticket, but understand that if there are other things, which I already explained in the language of silence, which because we are amongst non moors tonight, I will not show you. However, there's a language of silence that you can speak to these people and they will not bother you. You can trust me on that. However, if you are not comfortable and you happen to get off your square and you get the ticket and you have to go to court, that's the first thing you have to say. I don't have a contract. And all of these courts, because they are corporations, the only type of policy they can deal with is contract policy, not contract law, contract policy. So the first thing you must ask is what? Do we have a contract? And if the answer is no, then I'm here under threat, duress, and coercion. You are violating my rights. It's as simple as that. You have no other reason to be there. Does that make sense? Okay. If the state comes in and says, you're not treating your children right and we want to take them, right? The first thing you have to say is, state, do I have a contract that says I gave my children to you? Did I, at what point produce the contract? Produce the contract. If you send me a bill and understand that if you belong to the corporate board state, you can't make these arguments because you do have a contract which is the birth certificate, which is the marriage license, which a marriage license is your contract, is the woman's contract with the state and the man's contract with the state. It's not a contract between the man and the woman. Never was, never will be. Unless you have a prenuptial agreement or something else, you don't have a marriage contract with the one you think you love. You have a contract with somebody else who, who becomes a third party to your life, always, till you rescind the contract, all right? Because that's not how you get married. Marriage is under all law. All right? And then what you're responsible to do is to place the oath that you take between the two of you on the public record. Where? Where do you place information on the public record? Do you know? With the county. The counties are ancient. They belong to us. 
They belong to us. Our ancestors named the counties. Our ancestors formed the counties. Our ancestors set up the, the government of the counties, and the counties operate a common, according to common law, which is royal law, which is Muslim custom.